So in today's video, we're going to talk about the future of DC Studios, if there is even a future, because Hollywood is doomed. It's literally on its last legs. If the writers strike and the actors strike continues because there is going to be no content, no TV shows, no movies, everything will be on repeat. The studios are looking to delay movies because it looks like the studios aren't going to budge and it only costs the studios $23 million a year to budge on what the actors and writers want and to ditch this ridiculous AI claim. There is a lot of interest and information going around. This is from a former Paramount Pictures and 20th Century Fox CEO. So it's someone that knows the industry really well. DC Studios is an absolute mess. The changes they've made to try and make them better are actually going to make them worse to the point where Blue Beetle is predicted to make $20 million domestically for a DC movie. That is low even for a new IP coming to the big screen for the first time in live action. Obviously, Blue Beetle has been in animated shows and also video games, never been on the big screen. So, yo, what is freaking good, YouTube? This might actually be a long video. So if you are new around here, what the f are you doing? The iconic Wall Street hit. So make sure to subscribe. Don't take me serious. Make sure to subscribe to never miss any of the Marvel, DC, Kaiju, pop culture based content. And we're having to talk about the strikes and stuff because that's related to everything that potentially could come in the future if it doesn't actually come to a stop if they don't resolve this issue hollywood tv shows entertainment excluding video games could be doomed forever so check us out on instagram at voice to you to see the beautiful face behind the beautiful voice and also check us out on twitter wash you g so mr james gunn is coming under fire and i could see why james gunn denies packing superman legacy with DC characters to attract buyers, shoots down rumors of a Justice League live action movie. So let me get this straight. James Gunn, the savior of the DC studios. Okay, you've got to give him props to what he did at Marvel Studios with Guardians 1, 2, and realistically because 3 made over $800 million. But is he going to be the founding father? Is he going to be the savior of DC Studios, I just can't see it. So you need to stick Hawk Girl, Mr. Terrific, Guy Gardner, Garena Lenton into a Superman story to tell the story better. I mean, James Gunn is good at directing, at storytelling in scripts. He's not bad, but he is positioning himself to make it look like it's a Justice League movie. So there's a Deadline article going around about this that has the headline, James Gunn denies packing Superman legacy with DC characters to attract buyers, shoots down rumors of new Justice League live action. And of all the places to respond, he responds on Instagram's new platform, Thread. DC announced over the weekend the Justice League anime film that will be released next year. DC have nothing to release next year. They really don't. We're talking about DC Studios. So they should actually push Aquaman 2 to next year, realistically, because outside of animation, they don't have anything. And realistically, no one cares for animation. Oh, but they do, but they do. Don't get me wrong. The Flashpoint Paradox and DC have related so many cool animated movies, but the Bigger general audience do not care. So this would come out in 2024 based on Crisis and Infinite Earth. Many deduct that this could be the basis of the possible live action film by James Gunn. However, James Gunn shoots the rumor down by replying to a fan with a simply no. Yet, Super Scuba Grace Randolph basically said that Superman Legacy is Black Adam 2.0. And James Gunn prides himself on debunking things. He has not debunked the plot for that movie. Okay, sure, bro. Sure, lads, sure, ladettes. I don't think it's true, but it's funny how he picks and chooses where he actually responds to people. And now DC has hired someone to take care of marketing and take care of press. He is still responding, but he's so much better than Kevin Feige because he responds to the public. He needs to stop responding. When Gunn revealed that Nathan, Isabella, etc., would be playing Green Lantern, Guy Garner, Hawk and Girl, Mr. Terrific, respectively, the filmmaker also opened up about why they're in the film. They fit the story, I'm telling. Story always comes first. Okay, so to tell a Superman and a super story with Lois Lane, you have to bring in other members.
members of the JSA. It's not really, I mean, it's a bit of clickbait saying Justice League, it's more GSA. So the movie is scheduled to come out July 2025. Yeah, that's not happening at all because the writer's strike and the actor's strike, the longer it goes on, it pushes everything back in Hollywood and you can only get certain studios and certain places to shoot at certain times of the year. So he, of course not. Of course not. Rumours Warner Bros. Discovery CEO ordered James Gunn to make it a basic Justice League movie. Of course not. Now, I've always said this. I do not believe that David Zaslav has 100% trust in James Gunn. It's just not going to happen. The same way if Bob Iger comes over at Marvel Studios and be like, yo, Kevin, you have to put this in. The same way Kevin Kennedy can dictate what happens with the future of Star Wars. It's just the case. I mean, it's cute. They've made DC its own independent studio that's not really made any difference so far, but maybe down the road it will. So has James Gunn debunked it? No. We won't really know anything until obviously the movie releases and they start shooting, but if the actor strike goes on, there ain't going to be no DCEU, is there? DCU, whatever it's called, doesn't matter, it's just DC. So also, in the news, it came out a couple of days ago, but it's been debunked, that Andy Morchetti has been fired for Batman Brave and the Bold. Now, I do think it's a little bit unfair to put all the blame for The Flash flopping on one person who directed the movie because you had the Warner Bros. factor where they put all this fake ass, fake marketing into the movie and they overhyped into it and then you look at a movie like barbie okay they did market that movie very well the barbie movie made more money than the flash movie in its opening weekend that is shocked the same studio so maybe they can make this actual superman just see movie now because the barbie movie made over 300 million dollars gross the budget was pretty low how can you go from the flash movie that had everyone under the sun to the barbie movie okay margot robbie's a big star called ryan glenn is but the trailer didn't really look hype but for some reason people want to watch it that's because that movie has organic market and the Flash movie, dear, I don't know what the f they were doing marketing. I said that multiple times. Wasn't hating. I said the storyline was pretty weak. And overall, your boy was right. I hate to say it. So has Andy Muschietti been fired? No, I don't think he has. It's just because there's no news going around, some people will start saying stuff. But realistically, he does pretty well with the horror stuff, with the, the It movies, for sure. That's not really got anything to do with DC stuff. The movie lost money. I would say it's down to the studios, it's down to multiple, multiple other things. DC's in an absolute mess at the moment. You've got Aquaman 2, which they don't seem to care about. It's not set in the DCU, it's not set in the DCEU, it's a standalone movie. We've got Blue Beetle coming out shortly, which is going to be a train wreck apparently. Early predictions are saying that it's not going to make any money. Box Office Pro predicts it's going to make 12 to $17 million domestically. Studios care for the American box office, but realistically, the global kind of box office should be a better kind of indication. The film will only gross $26 million and 55 in its entire run. Okay, so if that's what they're forecasting the movie to make, you just tax right off. I know they've already started to do some premieres. They can't do it with the actors who are in the movies. They only can do it with directors. But the directors should be supporting the actors and the writers realistically. So what is the person who made Blue Beetle, directed Blue Beetle, actually doing? You should be supporting your cast and crew. You should be supporting the actors and the writers because wanting full control over them with AI for one day's work and not paying them anything? That is freaking whack in any job. I don't think anyone would be okay with that in any field. Just because they're Hollywood actors doesn't mean they make as much money as what people actually think. It's only the top 10% of actors that actually make decent money. And most Hollywood actors actually make between twenty dollars to $50,000, which is actually like the average wage, I believe, in America. So most actors aren't even actually full-time actors. They mostly work normal jobs. So Hollywood isn't as lucrative as what most people think and that's pretty common knowledge so also in the news now this is actually pretty bad so the former paramount pictures and 20th century fox ceo barry warns hollywood is doomed if the strike continues to Christmas. Barry, the current chairman of IAC and Expedia, and the former CEO of Paramount Pictures and 20th Century Fox, have warned that if the ongoing SARG and WGA writers' strike continues to Christmas, it spells doom for Hollywood and it will b no, it won't actually. But he says he appeared on a CBS Face the Nation where he asked, what do you think about the impact and how long will it last? And his answer is actually pretty interesting because he did work in the field, well, the problem with this particular, all strikes get settled. The issue for this one is when, because you have almost a perfect storm here, which is you had, you know what, 
which sent people home to watch streaming and television and killed the theatres, which now due to Oppenheimer and Barbie, uh, they are kind of open again and people love to go to the box office if you make a good movie and market it correctly. You've had the result of huge investments in streaming services, which have produced all these losses for the companies, which are now kind of wrenching. So at the moment, this is kind of a perfect storm. It's okay if it gets settled in the next month. But what happens if it doesn't, he continues. There doesn't seem to be enough trust and energy to get it sold. Now, he really went in, but he knows what he's talking about. What will happen if, in fact, it doesn't get sold to Christmas or so? Now, this is the part that people don't realize. Then next year, there's not going to be many programs for anybody to watch. So you're going to see subscriptions get pulled, which is going to reduce the revenue of these movies, companies, television companies. The result of that is there will be no programs and at just the time the strike is getting settled that you want to gear back up there won't be enough money in the industry so this actually will be devastating effects if it does not get settled soon and then the problem with the settlement in this case is there's no trust between the parties there are existing issues obviously ai which i think is just overhyped to death in terms of what worries the actors and writers are going to be replaced rather than assisted which is what i think will happen but there's no trust he alliterates you have the actors union saying how dare those 10 people who run their companies earn all this money and won't pay us well if you look at it on the other side the top 10 actors get paid more than the top 10 executives very true but that's a really small percentage but you got to play both sides i'm not saying either is right actually everybody's probably overpaid at the top end which is a fair comment the one idea i had is to say a good faith measure both the executives and the most paid actors should take a 25% pay cut to try and narrow the difference between those who get highly paid and those who don't, he stated. He also added, the other thing I would do, I would call for September 1st deadline. That's a strike deadline. I think there should be a settlement deadline because unless it happens by September 1st, the actions and of course, who cares about Hollywood? Who cares about it? But the truth is, this is a huge business, both domestically and for the world export. But these conditions will produce an absolute collapse of the entire industry. And now he actually is bang on. Then Bob Iger comes out and says, oh, the actors and writers are asking for unburst. Bob Iger, you, you, you're clueless, lad. You don't live in the real world. You, you live in the Disneyland world. So that's a pretty interesting take because he's right. There has to be a deadline. They have to agree. And if nothing happens by the end of the year, there will be no programming for next year. So you'll get mediocre TV shows, mediocre animated stuff, and there'll be no new season, there'll be no new movies, because sure, yes, there are movies coming out next year, like Godzilla, X-Kong, The New Empire, and there's a bunch of movies coming out next year, but when you get past next year, there isn't really going to be anything. So it does slow Hollywood down and the TV shows and the movies that people moan they earn too much money. But if you look into it, they don't. So what the former Paramount and CEO of 20th Century Fox is saying makes complete sense. So not just DC Studios, every studio in Hollywood is absolutely screwed. But I don't think what James Gunn's trying is actually going to work because it just seems like he, he's doing a Justice League movie or a JSA movie with Superman, but it's interesting. So in today's video, I've got you up to date with all the latest and greatest DC information going around. To be fair, I'm sorry it was pretty boring, but there isn't really anything going around for DC. But I haven't done a DC video in a few days, so I wanted to catch up the content on the DC stuff and also talk about how Hollywood is going to be screwed if this strike that no one cares about doesn't get settled very soon delaying movies like dune and aquaman 2 to next year isn't really going to solve it it's just going to help the studios in the short term but not in the long term so like always guys check us out on instagram at watch you to see the beautiful face behind the beautiful voice check us out on twitter i will catch you in another video very soon catch you later